A flower is the reproductive part of a plant. And in this picture, as you can see, this flower has both the male and the female reproductive part. But I have, I have labeled only the male reproductive part, which is called the stamen. Now, the stamen consists of a long stalk-like thing, which is called a filament. And it has this knob-like structure on top, which is called the anther. And this anther is actually the fertile part of this, of this male reproductive part. So this fertile part produces pollens and this pollen travels all the way to the female reproductive part of the same flower or different flower and fertilizes the egg and produces seeds and fruits. So in this video, we will talk about how this pollen is produced inside the anther and this formation of pollen inside the anther is called Microsporogenesis, where microspore means pollen and genesis means formation. And also, one anther do not give rise to just one pollen. It gives rise to many, many pollens. We will, we will see in a minute how this anther does that. So let's have a closer look at the anther. So here we have taken a bilobed anther. Anthers can be a single, lo single lobed as well. So the single lobed anthers are called monothecus and the bilobed, bilobed anther are called diathecus. And the word diathecus very correctly explains the structure of the anther. Di means two, so we can see two lobes and thecus means compartments. So this anther has two compartments and the pollen and the pollen is produced inside this anther. So let us have a transverse section of this pollen. Let's cut it this way and see what is inside the anther. So with a close look into the anther, you can see that the anther has this long, long tube-like thing inside, which is also called a sac. Let me write it down. Sac inside which the pollens are produced. This black black dots that you see, these are cells which later will become pollens. So the sacs are called pollen, pollen sacs. Okay. And each lobe of anther, as you can see, has two pollen sacs. This is a pollen sac number one. This is number two. And in another lobe, this is another pollen sac. So let me number it this way. This is number three and this is number four. So in a diathecus anther, that means in a bilobed anther, we have four pollen sacs. Well, I'm stressing so much about the number of pollen sacs because, uh, because a number of questions are asked in the exam about uh, the number of pollen sacs in diathecus and monothecus ant anthers. Now, let's, let's zoom in even further. Okay, so now if we zoom in further and look at this part, just this part from above, it will look something like this. This is the two anther lobe and this is the outermost layer, a single sheet of cell which forms the epidermis. So this is the epidermal layer and the two anther lobe, this one here and the other one here is connected with the help of a tissue which is called the connective. And through this connective, the vascular tissue runs, uh, through which the, this anther gets nourishment. Uh, anyway, so this is the tissue that takes care that the two, two lobe of anther is connected. And apart from that, beneath the epidermal layer, we also have another layer which is called endothecium. Now the epidermal layer and the endothecium, along with another layer which is called the middle layer, they together perform the function of protection. So they protect the microspores that will be growing somewhere here. So let me quickly show you the microspores. The pink pink cells that you see here are the ones that will give rise to microspores. So these are not microspores yet. And the yellow covering that you see beside, this is the most important layer. It is called the tepetum. So let me write it here. 
This is the tip beta. And it has a number of functions. But before we talk about the functions of tipetum, let's have a closer look at this part. Just, just this tipetal layer and the cells inside. So I have made it outside here. So this layer that you see is made up of cells. These are called tipetal cells and the layer is called tipetum. I have written it already. So these cells... These tipetal cells are large and it has a lot of cytoplasm and it can provide for the cells, I mean provide nourishment to the cells that is, that is in the inner layer. And these cells, the very tightly packed cells are called sporogenous cells. So let, let me write it here. So this here inside are called sporogenous cells. And why are they called sporogenous? Because these cells later will become microspores. But again, there are so many cells inside and not all cells will, will develop into a microspore. Some cells will disintegrate on the way. Few will disintegrate and will be consumed by the, by the cells that are in the vicinity. So they will also act like a food food source for other cells. And the few cells that, that remain will develop into microspore or a pollen. And this part, uh, this part is the most important part of the entire video because a lot of questions are asked from this part. And also from here on, this sporogenous cell will develop into microspores. So let us quickly clear the board. All right, now among the few cells that are left inside inside this tipetal layer, let's bring one of them outside. So this one here is a cell from, from this porogenous cell mass, okay? Now I have called this cell microspore mother cell. So we call it microspore mother cell because, because they give rise to microspores. Right. Okay, now before we proceed and look into what happens to this microspore mother cell, let me tell you something which is common for all plants on earth. A plant can either be in the gametophyte egg stage or it can be in the sporophytic stage. And the gametophyte or we can say gametes are either male gametes and the female gametes. So in order to form gametes, uh, you may probably know already that uh, the gametes have half the number of chromosomes or we call them haploid. So gametophytic stage is always haploid while uh, uh, as these gametes fuse, they form a diploid zygote and diploid zygote give rise to the rest of the plant body and that plant body is called the sporophytic stage. So, so that sporophyte is diploid as well. The sporophyte later undergoes meiosis at one point in life and give rise to gametophyte and this gametophyte give rise to gametes and this is a cycle that goes on uh, in any plant on earth. So in this video as we are going to produce pollen and pollen being the male gamete has haploid number of chromosomes. So to form haploid number of chromosome the cells or the microspore mother cell has to undergo meiosis. So now our microspore mother cell is in the sporophyte stage. Therefore, it has twice n number of chromosomes or we can say it is in the diploid stage. Okay, now let me get rid of this. Okay, this microspore mother cell, as we just discussed, will now undergo meiosis to give rise to male gametes. Now, after meiosis, we get four haploid cells and the four haploid cells are here. And these four cells are now called microspore tetrad. And also this microspore tetrad can be arranged in different ways. The four cells can be arranged in a number of ways. So if, if, if it is arranged this way, uh, it is called tetrahedral. Here we can only see three cells. One is behind the sphere. So this is a tetrahedral arrangement. 
this is a linear arrangement this is a isobilateral this is same as this one and this is t-shaped there are few more shapes so so uh, this tetrads or this four cells can be arranged in a number of different ways and the most common one is this one the tetrahedral shape now this microspore tetrad is held together by a protein which is called callos these callos are holding all these four haploid cells together in a tetrad now all these four haploid cells develop into individual pollen particles so these four cells will give rise to four different pollen grains so uh, to form individual pollen particles they need to be freed right so for that we need to uh, we need to dissolve this callos and who does the dissolving so it is dissolved by an enzyme which is produced by the stipatum layer. Remember I told you the stipatum has a number of functions. So the stipatum now uh, produces an enzyme that dissolves the callos and the enzyme is called callase. Callase. And callase dissolves callos. So the callos layer slowly dissolves and it gives rise to four individual microspore cells and this process is called microsporogenesis the microspores are formed so are these pollen yet these these are not pollen yet there are few more changes required in this microspore so that we can call them a pollen now we will we will talk about all those changes in a future video but uh, for now uh, what is what is very important and what is worth noting is that from one microspore mother cell we get four microspores and therefore from here we will get four pollens right four pollens now if in one pollen sac there are say five microspore mother cells five microspore mother cells it will give rise to how many pollens can you think can you think of an answer it gives rise to five multiplied by four that is 20 pollens now let's say each pollen sac has five microspore mother cells so how many pollens will we get from a dithecus dithecus anther so for a dithecus anther we need to multiply this 24 times right because we will have 20 pollens in each of this pollen sac so four times 20 gives us 80 pollens so so let me just write pollen here so from from one anther from a dithecus anther we got 80 pollens and that is the reason we see so so many pollen in just tiny tiny little flowers so this is all about microsporogenesis and after this in in the future video we will look into the changes that takes place in each of these individual cells that finally forms a proper pollen